If I remember right, Jesus arrived at the trailer where we lived in Glenville during the summer when Papa Henry poured the gasoline all around the elm tree stump and incinerated the Japanese beetles. He could do anything, that man. But Papa wasn't around when Jesus showed up. I recognized him at once as he emerged like a, a daddy long legs from his Volkswagen bug stuffed full of books. Jesus is here, I said to Mom. I knew, because I'd seen him gleaming in glass and sunlight at church, the autumnal tint of his beard and long wavy hair and his eyes as blue as the plastic cup I used to brush my teeth mornings and nights, and yet not nursery-hued like funny pages or Sunday school booklets filled with pictures of him and Moses, but in dingy linen and gray corduroy with a face cavernous and tired and veins of silver through his hair. Mom offered him coffee. Yes, with cream and sugar, please. And my little brother was in diapers and had scant knowledge of theology, so he wasn't especially intrigued, but... Like Thomas, in a spasm of doubt, I asked him, Are you Jesus? And he and Mom laughed. You could call me Mark. And I thought maybe I could call him Jesus after we'd spent more time together. Out of his bag, he took a shallow box, lopped sidelong like one of those slate markers on the battle graves up on Tank Hill. But when he touched its strings with those infinite fingernails of his, I knew it was a harp like I'd heard the angels playing in the clouds. He cuddled his cheek against his own and set his arms caressing all around it the way I'd always hoped and wanted to be touched and sang in rhyme and Mom sang too the vanishing parables of those hills. Black is the cloud.